the digital landscape has just warped everyone's brain into thinking that uh, they're making a change or a difference. It's not happening, baby. The only person who made a difference is our good old Ruski friend who started the Telegram. That guy is making a difference because he's allowing and facilitating ISIS, child pornography and drug trafficking, but also pro-democracy chats that can go up to like 200,000 members. So again, he's God. Free choice, baby. God gives us free choice. Do we crucify Pavel Durov for creating Telegram, which to be honest with you, I didn't know existed? I'm a loyal Instagram, Twitter, Facebook guy. I didn't know. I'm not on WhatsApp. I don't go on um, the one that disappears, Snapchat, that the kids are on, where they're doing God knows what on there. <laughs> whoever, you know, whoever created Reddit, like they know it's going to be used for evil. Like what's, what's good? To the guy who created Reddit's like Dayton Serena Williams and he's living this great life. Meanwhile, you go on Reddit and people are just bullying each other, sharing murder videos. And he's just walking away with tons of money going out there going like, you know, we got to make the world better for females and just, isn't it funny? <laughs> they create these products that are used for such nefarious purposes, but they are so pious. They take their fucking money and they just go, I don't know, I'm turning a blind eye. I'm turning a blind eye to the power that I yield with my platform that I created. Like, I didn't even know it was going on. I didn't even know. Pavel Durov goes, I don't even know what's going on. I don't even know. I've heard some things. I've heard some rumors. I've heard some rumors that there were some neo-Nazis that shoot up, shot up a school in Brazil. I've heard some news that we were temporarily banned in Brazil. I heard some news. I heard some news that there's some uh, child traffickers on there. I've heard some news. But listen, man, just get in there. Get in there undercover and do what you got to do. That's our position, right? What's our official position here at the Giannis Pappas Hour? Is Pavel Durov the billionaire who created um, Telegram, who lives in Dubai, um, which has how many 900 million users? Something like that. Um, what are the unique things about Telegram? You can have a private group up to, uh, what was it? 200,000 members. So you can build an online militia. When you can amass 200,000 in a private group, it's either going to be, it's extremes. The groups are going to be extreme. You're never going to get 200,000 over enthusiasm over books. That'll never, gav that doesn't galvanize those type of numbers. You start a book club, you're going to get 2,000 people in your private group. You start a uh, pro-democracy revolution, that's going to convince 200,000 people to get in there. You start a hate the Jews group. I don't even think 200,000, I think they probably hit their limit and then they started lobbying Pavel or whatever his name is for more space. They're going like, I didn't, I didn't know these, I didn't know it was going to be flying off the shelves like this. <laughs> Terrorist groups, you can do a lot of good stuff. So basically we talked about it and I think I kind of, we kind of reached an agreement, Right. So he's just God in this scenario. He's the digital God. He's providing the infrastructure like God did and saying, do with it what you will, my sons and daughters. Do with it what you will. And we did with it what we's do. We did the best of things and the worst of things. And um, the reason why he's been detained in France, if I didn't mention that, is because um, he's refused to cooperate with... Uh, judicial bodies and governments on um, giving information on um, some of the criminal activity that they've documented. And, sorry, my nose is itching from all the coke. And um, they also have criticized him for not moderating any of it. And he goes, hey man, I'm G-O-D. Free will, baby. It's a free will, it's a free will argument. And that's what we've decided is true. We're basically saying law enforcement has to up their game, right? They got up their game. That's all there is to it. We got to fund them more, but then you got to spend a lot more money on law enforcement, right? And let these billionaires just cake off. 
<laughs> so let's put this on the people is what we decided. Because you can't, I mean, you got to do something, right? You can't just let child traffickers communicate coordinates and stuff like that. You can't let ISIS and terrorist groups and neo-Nazi groups just coordinate uh, so they can blow up schools and private chats that law enforcement can't access unless they go undercover, which when they do, um, you know, maybe they're slow to act because they're an underfunded bureaucracy. So maybe it's time for superheroes. This is what's great about Adam Smith's free market. You have to find a solution for the problem that arises. So it's time now. We need real Trump Iron Man. To go. <laughs> I think the only thing, we've gotten to the point, I think, where we really need to build superheroes. We got AI. We got to morph. Um, we got to combine humans with technology and create Batman. There needs to be vigilantes who are out there preventing this stuff because I just don't think local law enforcement um, can keep up with the, t the technology, which is global. You got these people from all over the globe coordinating um, and conspiring. And uh, YouTube and uh, I'm Google and Meta, they, uh, they cooperate with law enforcement more. And I think even Twitter does. They moderate. They have community notes. They have all that stuff. The thing with Telegram is it's complete laissez-faire. So, of course, you got the libertarians up in arms going free speech, baby. Slippery slope. What's next? Edward Snowden. This is bad. They're going to throw us all in camps because, of course, baby, gray zone issues get thrown to the wolves. And it's either, you know the deal, you know the dance, you know the deal, and you know the dance. Okay? You know it. It's, we're all going in camps. This is the beginning of George Orwell's 1984. It's full-blown communism or full-blown fascism. Ain't no in-between. You know the fucking two-step. You know the jig. We've been playing this game for about fucking 10 years now, maybe a little less. Everyone is either a fucking enemy, a commie, or a fascist. We talked about it last episode. Ain't no more bipartisan dinner parties that are fun. They end up in violence. <laughs> so you know the fucking drill. And the usual suspects who love their fucking hearing their voice echo into the ether and getting many retweets and being very relevant attend the two-step dance party right on cue. Edward Snowden, libertarian voices. Then you got your left voices, just calling it Armageddon. The gray, dude, gray is out. Gray is out this millennium. The 20, are we in the 21st or 22nd century? I'm no mathematician, but I know we're in the 20s. <laughs> the 21st century, let me tell you something, is in black and white. We've gone back to black and white. Because gray is out this season. Gray suns are out. Because any reasonable person on a podcast that does not galvanize you with anger and fervor doesn't make any radical calls to action and are usually viewed less um, will tell you that this issue is a gray zone issue, right? There's any reasonable person can see merit on both sides. Obviously, you know, what did Pavel Durov himself do wrong, right? What did he do? Did he not cooperate with law enforcement? Uh, he's just a business guy, created a business. Um, people could use telephones. They could use cell phones. I guess those companies do cooperate with law enforcement. Maybe there's a law in the EU that says you have to cooperate and he didn't. I don't know the specifics. And on the, those issues, I don't know. But as far as the big, overarching, theoretical umbrella issues, if you will, it's like he himself just created the infrastructure. It's been used just as much for bad as it's been used for good. So he didn't do any, he didn't shoot anyone in a Brazil school. He didn't do anything um, anti-Semitic. He didn't um, 
planning the attacks or traffic any children. He didn't do it, right? He just turned a blind eye to whatever people want to do, and that's his business ethos. Free speech, free speech, free speech. We get it. And then on the other side, you see a lot of good points going like, hey, man, you know, this is what's happening on your site. Do you mind if we you work with us to moderate it a little bit? And you can't just have jail rules, you know? It's like free speech uh, absolutists. You just can't talk to them about anything. It's like, you know, essentially the analogy is jail rules sports. It's like, it's like MMA without any, okay, you can punch in the back of the head, you can headbutt, you know? Technically, if you want to make a, uh, you want, they did that. It didn't work as good. Then they instituted some rules, made it a little more civilized. You know, basketball, you need a referee. You need a ref. You need rules. You can't just have unfettered freedom. I mean, we've tried it. I mean, we've tried it. I mean, it's human. It's because of human nature, you know? So there's got to be some give or take. And then where everyone ends up, I don't know. But I'm just saying... This is 100% a gray zone issue. But that's not part of the, the yellings about it. All the yellings I've seen have just been the two-step dance, which is what the name of this episode is going to be, is the two-step dance. You put your commie foot here, you put your fascist foot here, you put your commie foot back, and then you shake it all about. You do the fucking Civil War dance all the way around. That's what it's all about. I think I'm nailing this social commentary right now. I don't mean to toot my own horn, but, you know, people say. People will say nobody nails it like Yanni. I don't say that. That's what people say. Not me. That's what people say. They call me the crypto podcaster. Not me. I don't do it. It's just what people are saying. Will you?